Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome back to creating a lifelike character using Blender in Make Human. I'm in Blender now, and what we're going to do, you should have exported your uh, character from Make Human. And in order to bring it into Blender, you're going to need to enable the importer for the Make Human format. So go to File, go to User Preferences, and go to the Import Export and scroll down and you should see the MHX format here. I have it already selected because I've been using it but it's not selected by default so you want to select that. Once you click that just X out of the uh, the settings there and if you want that to be checked every time what you'll need to do is just do a file and save your user settings. Okay so once you got that selected then just go back to file do an import and choose the make human format and then you're going to need to find your uh, make human character and if you're using Windows uh, 7 like I am then it's going to put it in users your username uh, documents make human exports and then whatever you called the character in my case I called it mh underscore character okay and this is the file that you want to uh, bring in, of course, it's the MHX file. A couple of issues that you might run into when you're trying to import your character, just to uh, in case you run into this. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Okay. If you try to import your character and you get a an error that says that it's expecting a certain version and it's not compatible with the version that Blender's expecting. Uh, what that means is uh, they try to keep these exporters on the same level between Blender and Make Human, but both programs are changing all the time, so I'm sure that's hard to do. In order to fix that problem, what you need to do is go into your My Documents, into the Make Human program. I'm sorry, this is actually where the character's stored. If you if you need to find your character, that's where it's at. But in order to fix this issue, what you need to do is go into, let me get my bearings here, uh, Program Files x86, find your Make Human folder, go down to Tools, go into Blender 26x as long as you're using, uh, I'm using Blender 2.63 by the way, and then go into the MHX underscore importer, you'll see this file right here, IO underscore import underscore scene underscore MHX. This is a Python script file. Just right click on it and choose copy, and then go back up and go into, in my case it's the program files because I'm using the 64-bit version of Blender and find your Blender install folder. In my case it's 2.63, it might be different for you. Go into, uh, I believe it's uh, scripts and then add-ons. And we're looking for that same file at IO import scene underscore MHX. You can see in my case I renamed the uh, original one ORG underscore ORG and then I just pasted that one that we just copied from the make human install into here and what that's going to do is going to force Blender to use the one that is coming from the make human so they will be on the same level no matter what and if you need any further help with that uh, there is some information on the make human website as well okay so once you got that then you can import your character And I'm running a heavy duty um, rendering right now in view, so it's taking a little bit of time, but it's importing it. Okay, so once it's in there, just click OK. And there's our character. Okay, and I'm just going to do a quick render to see what it looks like right out of the box, so to speak. I'm going to do a control zero up here on my camera view so I can see what I'm seeing. 
Uh, do a 7 to go to top view. Just going to use G to pull my camera out here. Kind of position my camera. And I'm going to do an F12 to render. So let's see what we come up with. I've added uh, some clothes onto my character and tweaked to not very many settings, but just enough to make it look at least sort of like a female. Okay, so right out of the box, in pretty much under 10 minutes, you can have this very decent looking character. Of course, you know, you can see the clothes, they need some tweaking, um, but and I'm not too thrilled about the you know the clothes that they give you. I mean it's it's definitely a work in progress and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more options coming along the way but yeah you can definitely use these clothes and and uh, just rearrange them how, however you want to. But very nice character. Um, another thing that you might run into as you bring the character in uh, if you see problems with the texture the clothes doesn't don't appear or don't look right or whatever. Uh, you may have done what I did um, in the past. I what I did is I didn't like going to look for my character in the uh, my documents file and drilling down all through those folders. So what I did is I took that entire folder of the character, I threw it on the desktop or wherever I wanted to on the C drive, and I said okay. I, I went into Blender and I imported it. And when you do that, uh, it, it tends to lose its um, idea I guess of where the, the textures are so it, it you can do that but all you need to do is just select your character go into the um, the material uh, look at the skin go into texture and make sure your your uh, diffuse is pointed to the actual uh, texture in this case the one I the skin I chose was uh, Caucasian female young and for the specularity, you want the one called texture underscore ref. It's a TIFF file. Um, so really, these two here. And I'm not sure why the sweater and jeans are showing up under the skin. But anyway, I guess it brings that in because the way it's posed. I'm not sure, but anyway. If if you find out that you know your your uh, textures are all screwed up, you're going to have to go in and and correct that or leave it in the folder that it originally was in. Now, now that we have this character here, you can click on this and it'll take you into pose mode, one of these circles here, and go ahead and hit R to rotate. And even though it's breaking out of the skin there because the sweater doesn't quite fit right, but you can see that it's a fully posable character and it actually poses very nicely um, you have this face plate here because we selected the face options and you can uh, shift select some of these uh, mouth points here and just choose G to move and you can see the character kind of smiling now one thing I've noticed with these characters is if you try to make one smile you got Dracula teeth poking through <laughs> So uh, I, I'm not too happy with the teeth right now, but that's okay. I mean, you have this amazing character that is is fully posable, very usable. Uh, pretty much saved my life because I'm doing a lot of I'm doing all the modeling for this project that I'm working on, and it's going to have characters. And in order to model all of the characters that's going to go with what I'm doing along with a, fr a friend of mine we're working on it. Uh, if I had to do all that uh, it would never happen because I would not be able to finish that kind of work. So this is pretty much a lifesaver. Uh, it's going to bring this project that I'm doing to hopefully to life and with without this I, w I probably would have said just forget it. So it's really really a tool that that can help boost your creativity if you're needing you know this quick character without having to go in and uh, model your own not to say that modeling your own is a bad thing definitely you know if you're doing something that you need this unique character that you're doing um, that's something that's just amazing if you can get in and model your own characters okay so we've got our character in here 
In the next segment, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add some hair to this character. So until then, see you soon.